We are now on page 316 in the lecture outline, and we want to examine how is carbon dioxide carried in the bloodstream. The picture that we see is a tissue cell, could be a muscle cell or any other cell in the body, and it's generating carbon dioxide from cellular respiration. The carbon dioxide is diffusing into the bloodstream, into the capillaries and then veins of the body. And as the carbon dioxide diffuses into the bloodstream, our question is, what happens to the carbon dioxide? The answer is, a small amount of carbon dioxide dissolves in the blood plasma. This reminds us of how a small amount of oxygen dissolved in the blood plasma. A medium amount of carbon dioxide enters the red blood cells and it attaches to the hemoglobin. When carbon dioxide combines with hemoglobin, that combination is known as carbaminohemoglobin. Yes, we'd like you to know that. Now, probably most of us had assumed that just as most oxygen is carried in a red blood cell, most of us probably would have assumed that most of the carbon dioxide is carried uh, uh, by our red blood cells. But that's not what happens. The majority of carbon dioxide that enters the bloodstream undergoes a chemical reaction. Most of the carbon dioxide will react with water to form H2CO3, carbonic acid. And like most good acids, that carbonic acid then proceeds to disassociate, to break apart, forming a hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ion. So that's what happens to most of the carbon dioxide that enters the bloodstream. This is page 317. So we are simply reminding you that some carbon dioxide does attach reversibly with hemoglobin, forming carbaminohemoglobin. But we have pointed out that what happens to most of the carbon dioxide entering the bloodstream is most carbon dioxide reacts with water, forming carbonic acid. This is shown lower down on the page. So lower down on the page, we wrote carbon dioxide can reversibly react with water to form carbonic acid. Now, one of the reasons why most of the carbon dioxide reacts with water is because there is an enzyme in the blood. It's actually associated with the red blood cells. But there's an enzyme in the blood called carbonic anhydrase. This enzyme catalyzes the reaction of CO2 combining with water to form carbonic acid. And then most of that carbonic acid proceeds to disassociate or ionize into a free hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ion. Now we say that most of the carbon dioxide carried in the bloodstream is carried in the form of bicarbonate. Why do we say that most of the carbon dioxide carried in the bloodstream is in the form of bicarbonate? Let's just track where the carbon atom is of carbon dioxide. Right here, here is the carbon in carbon dioxide. Over here in carbonic acid, there is the carbon of carbon dioxide in the carbonic acid molecule. After the carbonic acid disassociates, where is the carbon atom? Right here. Here is the carbon of the carbon dioxide in the form of bicarbonate. Now, this is a reversible reaction, and the direction of the reaction is determined by the relative amounts of reactants and products. When there is an increasing level of carbon dioxide entering the bloodstream, it drives the reaction in this direction, increasing the amount of hydrogen ion and bicarbonate. That's what happens in, out in the tissues, where carbon dioxide is entering the bloodstream. However, in the lungs, the exact opposite happens. Because in our lungs, when you exhale carbon dioxide out of your lungs, out your mouth, the carbon dioxide level in the bloodstream is going down. And when carbon dioxide levels start to decrease in the blood, the reaction then tends to go in this direction, where 
uh, decreasing carbon dioxide in the blood as you exhale it, as you get, eliminate carbon dioxide uh, from your bloodstream into the lungs and out your mouth. So in the bloodstream, in the lungs, uh, hydrogen ion combines with bicarbonate, forming carbonic acid, and carbonic acid then proceeds to break apart into CO2 and water so that more CO2 can go out of the bloodstream and into the lungs. So this direction of this reaction follows the classic mass action equilibrium process where increasing amounts of CO2 drives the reaction this way, decreasing CO2 drives the reaction this direction. Now we have mentioned that at least out in the tissues, so CO2 combines with water to form carbonic acid, which breaks apart into hydrogen ion and bicarbonate. So we might ask the following question, shown on the next page, 318. On page 318, we pose the following question. Do you think that the acidity, or pH, of the uh, blood might change where carbon dioxide is entering the bloodstream and forming carbonic acid, and in fact disassociating and forming free hydrogen ions? Well, in fact, it does change the acidity and the pH. The pH, normal pH of our systemic arterial blood is about 7.4, but the normal pH of systemic venous blood, as designated by a small letter V, is a lower pH, 7.36. That means that it's more acidic. That's because of the increased amounts of carbonic acid found in the systemic venous blood. This is the picture just a little bit lower down on the page, on the lower left on page 318. Let's just summarize one more time. How is carbon dioxide transported or carried in the bloodstream? So we see in this uh, picture a small amount of the carbon dioxide that is uh, given off by tissue cells and entering the bloodstream, entering the capillaries and veins. Uh, just simply dissolves in the plasma, the blood plasma. A medium amount of carbon dioxide, and I'm not asking you to know the actual percents, but just a we'll just say a, a medium amount, uh, uh, enters the red blood cell and attaches to the hemoglobin in the red blood cell, forming what we call carbaminohemoglobin. But the majority, most of the carbon dioxide, more than half, that enters the bloodstream, reacts with water, forming carbonic acid, which then disassociates and forms a bicarbonate ion. And so therefore we say that most of the carbon dioxide being carried or transported in the bloodstream is in the form of bicarbonate ion.